do you use stop drops to protect the collision? Okay, that's a great question. I have a interview on uh, Indian TV in uh, how many days ago? I think three, four days, where I told them I want to talk to them about the subject of the stupidity of stop losses. The whole interview is about that subject because what I found very strange is um, if I turn on the a stock channel in the US, like CNBC or whatever, <laughs> and somebody is making some recommendation, they will just say that this stock's at $10, it should be worth 30, something like that. They don't talk about stop, stop loss, okay? In India, when I turn on the TV, the, also there were too many channels for stocks, okay? When I turn on the stock channel, every single pundit who comes has a stop loss and a target. Okay, they say, okay, the stock's at 10, target is 12, stop loss is now. I look at that, I say, oh my God, this is so stupid. So let me explain why it's stupid. Okay, uh, it'll help me prepare for the interview. Thank you. Okay, so markets, uh, stock markets are auction driven entities. People come in and buy and sell, and the buying and selling creates a clearing price, right? And that clearing price may or may not have anything to do with the underlying value of the company. It is going all over the place. So for example, uh, let's say Amazon is a company uh, selling for $1,200 a share, for example, okay? What is the value of Amazon? Well, the value of Amazon is all the cash they will produce from now till the date the company doesn't exist. <clears throat> and then you discount that back to yeah. present value. That's the value of Amazon. Okay, so we have to know what the cash flow is in 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, mm -hmm. and we have to know when the company doesn't exist. Okay, mm -hmm. so first question I have, when does Amazon not exist on planet Earth? I have no idea. In fact, if I go to Jeff Bezos and ask him the same question, he has no idea either. Mm -hmm. I go, hey, Jeff, listen, buddy, can you tell me when is your company not going to exist? In? He's first of all going to hit me for <laughs> mentioning such a thing and then say, I have no idea. So then second question to Jeff Bezos, hey, Jeff, you know everything about Amazon. Can you tell me what the cash flow is in 2018? Tell me what the cash flow is in 2019, 2020, 2021, et cetera. He has no idea. Person in the company, running the company has no idea. But the market has given a precise number for the value of Amazon. Precise number, to the cent. This is the value of Amazon, right? To the cent. And so what the market is saying is, me, the market, knows everything. All the future cash flow of Amazon is $1,200 per share, present value, okay? So the reality is, the market also doesn't. The $1,200 could be too low, or it could be too high. But the odds that it is correct is very low. It could be too low or too high. And so if I buy Amazon and I someone tells me, listen, $1,200 a share, $1,100 stop loss, $1,400 target, um, I, I, that, that would be a very stupid thing to do. Because for example, let's say uh, when I was buying Mauta three or four years ago, I think the stock price was like at 170 RMB. Right, and I looked at the company and looked at everything, it looked cheap to me, so I bought. Right after I finished buying, it went to 150 yards. Okay, mm -hmm. so if I put a, any stop loss in that, they all be gone today. Mm -hmm. I would have no amount. So let's say I buy 170, 155 stop loss and 300 RMB target, it will go to 150, it got taken out, gone. So the nature of equity markets is that they fluctuate. They fluctuate all the time. We cannot, we cannot, we have our investments taken away from us just because they fluctuate. So, for example, let me take another uh, example. Let's say there is a house in Beijing. Let's say the value of the house is five million RMB. Okay. Let's say the house is listed on the stock exchange. Only thing in the stock in the in the stock is this house. Okay. Now 
let's say I have a friend who is a real estate agent who knows stock or the price of the house is very well. I tell this friend, listen, come and have coffee with me every day. And every day when you come and have coffee with me, please tell me the price of the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I buy the house for 5 million RMB. Next day I call my friend. What is the price of my house? He said, listen, idiot, still 5 million RMB. Didn't change. Two days, still 5 million RMB. Every day he's getting upset that he calls, you call him and he has to give you the same information. There's no change. Then after <coughs> two months, he says, oh, oh, listen, there's some change. It moved half percent. Okay, it's gone up half percent. You feel very happy. The same house on the stock exchange is doing this. Every, every six seconds, 5 million RMB, 4.8 million for, uh, RMB, 5.2 million RMB, 4.7 million RMB. That stock price is moving everywhere without consideration for the underlying asset because buyers and sellers are creating the stock price. Whereas in the house, it is one intelligent buyer, one intelligent seller who look at the price and set the price. So the price, the way, reason why Buffett became a billionaire is because of auction-driven markets. Auction-driven markets create opportunity. They undervalue companies mm. and they overvalue them all the time. So a stop loss makes no sense. So I'm never going to buy a company unless it is worth at least double of what I think it should be. I, I never buy anything, at least a double. I want at least a double, right? So if I buy something for 20 RMB, it has to worth at least 40. And I bought Mao Tai, I knew value is more than double, right? So if I'm buying for a double, I one of the things I have to, reason I have no debt and no leverage is because everything I buy goes down in price. I don't know what happens to you, but that's what happens to me. Everything goes down in price after a buy. It knows Monish bought it. <laughs> Take it down. Take it down after he bought. So it always happens. So if you only take one thing from the class, it is not compounding. Take away this. Forget about stock. If you're doing value investing, stock loss makes no sense.